Hey everyone, welcome to the lecture for 2.2. So this is going to be volumes by slicing. Um, this is often referred to as the disc method and the washer method. The disc method and the washer method aren't the same necessarily, but they're very closely related and we'll go over kind of what the differences are. Um, I'll just start out by saying a disc is like a quarter. So a disc is what you would think of as a disc. It's all the like maybe a little quarter or something like that. And a washer is what you would think a washer is, where it's got that little hole cut out in the middle. So those are the main differences. Great drawings to start. Okay, so starting off with the disk method, again, the definition, we require F to be continuous and we also require it to be non-negative. And you'll see why in a second. Um, so basically what you do is you just take F and you rotate it around an axis. In this case, we're rotating around the X axis, which is why we're integrating with respect to X. <clears throat> and then you also have your limits of integration where you're going from X equals A to X equals B. So that's where you get your upper and lower boundaries. And then Okay, so where does pi and why are we squaring it? Well, let's just think about this really quickly. If I have a disc, right? So any disc, like think about maybe like a hockey puck, for example. So the volume of this is going to be the surface area, right? So maybe like this thing on top. times the width. So for us, surface area, we know to get the surface area of a circle, it's just pi r squared. And we'll just leave this at w. So if we kind of translate that into the world of calculus two, then what we're gonna end up having is, let's say we're here. Oh, straight lines, okay. Here we go. Say we're here. And let's say that maybe our function is doing this. So if I rotate this around the x axis, I have my upper and lower limits here, a and b. So what's going to happen is if you rotate this around the x axis, you create this kind of roundish solid shape. going to get, okay, hopefully that is even. So now you have this three-dimensional shape, right, where you rotated it around. But how do we get a disc out of here? So the way that we get a disc out of here is we just make a little cut. We're going to do a little bit here. Like imagine this was kind of like stacked quarters of different sizes or stacked hockey pucks of different sizes and you kind of just stack them all together. So what you would get is if you pulled out a hot, oh my God, my drawing is really subpar today. So what you would get is you'd get like a little hockey puck out of this guy. And we just wanna know like what is the area of this hockey puck. So, <clears throat> if we try to think about like slipping that out of the shape, what we're gonna end up with is our hockey puck here but what is the area of this right so we need the radius so what is the radius going to be so the radius is 
this here, the height straight up. Well, that's given by our function. This is just f of x. So our radius equals f of x. And then we also have the idea of width, right? So this is just a small change in x. And in calculus, we call a small change in x, we usually denote it dx or delta x. But since we're doing a, an integral, not a sum, we're gonna call it dx. So now I basically wanna cut this thing up all into like these little kind of like quarters or hockey pucks of various radius where the radius is given by f of x. So what's going to happen is I'm going to get the integral, which is again, think about like a sum of all these little pi r squared times width. And I'm gonna start at a and I'm gonna go all the way up to b. Well, we know that our radius is f of x, so this is going to be integral a b pi times the function, which is our acting as our radius, and then times the width, which is dx. So that's exactly where this formula for the disk method comes from. So let's see if we can try to do an example. So as always, you definitely want to draw a picture so you can get an idea. So our first example here is we're going to be going around the x-axis. We're going to be on the interval from 1 to 4. And um, we're bounded by this guy and the x-axis itself. So that means I'm here. I look like the square root function. So if this is my region, then I just want to swing this around the x-axis. So I've got to extend my y down a little bit further. So I should come down to negative 2. And I'm just going to swing it around and create this kind of like bell shape. So this is kind of like a solid bell, maybe with the top cut off or something like that. And so in order to set up, I mean, I could just memorize a formula, but that's like not a great strategy in general. You always want to try to think about what's the, what's like the least amount of work I can do at the maximum payout. And I think for calculus, it really comes down to don't stress so much about memorizing formulas put the stress on understanding where the formulas come from so that you can always derive them on the fly and you're not so worried about memorizing stuff that hasn't really clicked yet. Um, okay, so first just draw yourself your little quarter or your little hockey puck inside your shape. Like, you don't have to do exa exactly what I'm doing, but I find this to be really helpful. So this is my little hockey puck friend. He lives in the bell. So here's my hockey puck. And I just want to think about what the area of this hockey puck is. So I always then kind of like draw it outside. And you might think, okay, well, this is ridiculous. This is like way too much drawing. I obviously get it. Da -da 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 -da. I'm warning you now, there's going to be a situation coming up where it gets a lot more complicated. So this is like kind of the simplest version of slicing and discs and washers is when not a lot's going on. So we have our radius here. So it's because we're kind of rotating about the x-axis. Then our radius is just the height, which is given by the function, which is defined to be the square root of x. So this guy has volume, so this little width here is dx because we're going along the x-axis. So if I wanted to set this up, I would just say, okay, I'm going from one to four, and then I'm gonna add up all my little quarter friends, my little hockey pucks. And so each hockey puck has pi r squared times width. So that's gonna be pi r squared is my function. 
and then my width is just dx. So this is a really nice simple integral where we go from one to four, um, just pi x dx. So a straightforward integration, pi halves x squared, evaluate from one to four. And so we're gonna get 15 pi over two. That's the volume of this region revolved around the x-axis. I left myself a lot of space, I see. Okay. So we can also go about the y-axis as well. And it's gonna be very much the same thing. So again, we're just restating here the setup. It's totally the same. It's just we're integrating with respect to y and our function is in terms of y. Here's what I don't wanna see. I don't wanna see an integral that has a bunch of stuff pertaining to x and then at the very end you have a dy in it. Save that for Cal 3. <laughs> so make sure that if you're integrating with respect to y, your variables in your integrand also need to be all in terms of y. So let's do a little example. We've got g of y equals the square root of four minus y squared. We're gonna go around the y-axis and we're gonna be bounded also on the left by the, the y-axis and we know that we're going from y equals zero to y equals four. Okay, super. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just draw what the region is and then try to draw the revolution as well. So, Uh, if I have, okay, so just if you're not great at graphing in terms of y, like some people who are giving this lecture may not be, this is what I do. I say, okay, this is really saying x equals the square root of 4 minus y. And then I'm like, all right, I'm much better graphing things where it's like y equals da 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 da. So I'm going to make this squared. And then I'm going to say that this is y equals four minus x squared. And to me, it's very easy to graph four minus x squared because I just do this. <laughs> and I know that my vertex is at four and then my root is at two. So I feel a lot better. Um, it's still, when I take my integral, I'm still gonna use g of y. I just kind of flipped it into the, uh, a function of x just for graphing. So here's my region. I'm gonna rotate it around the y-axis and I'm going to get on the other side, this should go to negative two and I'm gonna get the other half of my parabola, which in general parabolas are much less pointy, but what can you do? So this is gonna be the solid of revolution like so. And so what happens here is we want to get our hockey puck friend back. So our hockey puck is really just gonna look like this. And I'm not drawing it in a specific place. I'm just kind of drawing it generally from somewhere within our interval zero to four. So this is what our hockey puck looks like. If I take that out and kind of examine it, I know that this is my y-axis. So my radius is actually going to be this distance here. So this distance is actually given by g of y, right? It's the distance from zero to this function point. Well, this function point is g of y. So in that case, then that I would know that my volume is pi times my radius, which is g of y squared dx, right? So that's just this one particular hockey puck. But I'm interested in adding up all the hockey pucks. <laughs> so I'm going to integrate. So what I have is my integral from zero to four. So just keep in mind that I'm going, I'm considering all these y values here. 
right? So that's where zero to four comes from. And then I go ahead and I plug in my little volume. So I get four, no, I don't, I get pi, and then I get g of y, which was the square root of four minus y. I square that whole thing and then I apply dy. Okay, so I already made a mistake. Haha. -ha. This is dy, right? It's the little change in y. Okay. Um, da -da -da -da. Another super straightforward integral to evaluate. So I'm just going to get the integral from zero to four of pi times four minus y dy. So this is pi times four y minus one half y squared evaluating from zero to four. So the answer that I get is, I don't know, 16 minus eight, so eight pi. And that's it, and that is the volume of that parabola rotating about the y axis. So the easy part is over now. <laughs> now we're gonna kind of step it up a little bit. Now we're gonna go into the washer method. So I think earlier I said, okay, disc is kind of like a whole quarter, a whole um, hockey puck. So now what I wanna do with the washer method is I wanna say, all right, well, what if I have kind of like missing chunk in the middle? So in general, if I have a washer, then this is really just the same thing as taking the washer, but kind of like in disc form. And by that, I mean, okay, person, right? So I still have the same washer, but if I just wanted to kind of do this algebraically, right, take the whole guy and then subtract out the donut hole, the missing little piece right there. So then I just subtract this out here because I know what the area of the washer is, right? So let's say for example, that from here to here is, I'm gonna call this capital R for our big radius. So that means also from here to here, this is going to be capital R the big radius. And then let's say I have just the little radius here from here to here. This is just little r. So this guy's also going to have little r as its radius. So this volume really equals pi times big r squared times the width. Notice they have the same width. This is important. Minus pi times my little radius squared. They have the same width. So I'm just going to do that. So I can simplify it by just combining up, um, or factoring out the pi w. So I have pi times the big radius squared minus the little radius squared times the width. So again, we're kind of taking out these washers and then we're gonna add them all up. So notice that's exactly what I have here. So this is my big R squared. This is my little r squared. This is my width. And that's where it all comes from. So let's see if we can do this in practice. So this is example 210. So we'll do this one and then we'll do one more. As always, graph, 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 draw, draw, draw as much as you can. I think it's super helpful. Um, Da, 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 da. What do I look like? Okay, so I'm here. I'm going from one to four. I am X. Okay, experience tells me that it's just a scotch easier to just draw the points after. So we can let this be, eh. you know what? Let me start over again, sorry. Right here, and here. 
Oh my geez, Louise, people. So we can let f of x equal x. And now you can do four. And then we have our other guy here that's going to be And it's going asymptotically to zero. So this is g of x equals one over x. So it should be like one fourth here. And then this is where they intersect, which is at the point one, one. All right, perfect. So what is our region? So we have our two graphs and it says bounded above by the graph f of x and below by 1 over x. So now we know that our region is here. So this is our region and we're going to rotate this about the x-axis. So I'm going this way. So basically what happens is, let's see if I can draw this nicely. Okay, and then okay, and then I'm just going to turn this into a dotted line. I'm going to have this, 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 and then this and then watch. Nice. Okay. So if this is my solid of a revolution, it's going to kind of look like a weird bunt cake pan if you're into baking, I guess. Um, so basically you just have this little circle cut out in the middle and it kind of gets more cut out as you go in. So anyway, if you're dying to know what the shape is, just head over to Nothing Bunt Cakes and then bring me one and then you'll know what a bunt cake looks like. Um, all right, so now what we need to do is we need to assess the washer. So I draw my little washer, or in this case, my gigantic washer. And I see that it's going to have a hole cut out of it in the center. And so it's kind of my job to suss out, well, how big is this hole and what is it doing? So now if I kind of extract this washer, maybe draw it a scope smaller. I'm gonna exaggerate that little hole in the middle just for my, oh my God, that looks awful. Whatever, I'm moving on. Okay, so let's talk about the big radius. So from, if I'm kind of shooting out here of the X axis, then I'm gonna have my big radius, which is gonna be from here to here. My big radius is given by the line this function here, right? So the big radius is given by f of x, which we know is the function just x. And then I also have a little radius, which is this guy here. And this is given by, uh, maybe I'll draw an edge line. So this is given by g of x, which is one over x. So now I know that the volume of this particular washer is going to be the big guy times the width minus the little guy. Oopsies, I should probably leave it consistent with notation. Minus the little guy times the width. And so it's pi times x squared dx 
minus pi times one over x squared dx. And then I can go ahead and simplify that. So this particular washer, hockey puck, donut hole, bunt cake thing is just pi times x squared minus one over x squared dx. And so now I'm ready to add up all of these washer hockey pucks. And the way I do that is through integration. So I'm gonna have, where am I going from? I'm going from one to four. And then I have pi times x squared minus one over x squared dx. And so this is another super straightforward integration. So that'll leave me with uh, hello, integration. This will leave me with pi times one third x cubed plus one over x. And I'm going to evaluate that from one to four. So again, just fundamental theorem of calculus part two. And what we should end up with overall is 81 pi over four. And I'll let you suss out the details of that, of that fraction, fun, simplification, party for one, 81 pi over four, or maybe you'd like to express it as 20.25 pi. All right, so last example. Um, Quickly before we move on to that, I just want to say that yes, we can do the exact same thing in terms of why it's You just follows the exact same method. So I'm not gonna bother too much with an example on washer method with respect to why just because I feel like I don't need to um, I'd like to do a little bit more of a challenging one. So this is when we're not going about a particular axis, but we're going about maybe a line uh, x equals a or y equals a. So in this case, we've got a function f of x equals four minus x, and then we're gonna bound it below still by the x-axis, but we're not going to rotate it about the x-axis. We're gonna rotate it below the x-axis about the line y equals negative two. So what this all looks like, I just cannot so let's let this be the x-axis. This is f of x equals four minus x. So that puts me here at this point four, this point is four. And then I'm actually gonna go about the line y equals negative two. So what that means is that if I rotate this around, it's going to kind of create this gap and Right, so now this is my solid of revolution. And so I just wanna go in and, and as usual, grab my, my hockey puck. So if I grab my hockey puck, right, you're gonna have this big hole in the center here because it's cut out. So this is what the hockey puck looks like. So now we just need to find the, the volume of this hockey puck. So first of all, it's a little bit different than last time. So um, again, hockey puck isolation.
and you have this like gigantic hole in the middle of it. Okay. So important things to remember is that it's coming out like this is where the x axis is. This is the x axis. And this is the line y equals negative 2. And then we also have our function, which is kind of coming in like that, right? So this is our f equals 4 minus x. So if I wanted to consider then what the what like what is this big R? Like if I'm going from here to here, how far is that? Well, it's definitely from here to here, it's f of x. Plus it's another two. So our big radius is actually f of x plus two. And then our little radius. Our little radius is also two, but does that mean that they're going to cancel out? No, because we have to square big R first and then we subtract off the square of little r. So that's going to create the, that's going to prohibit the cancellation of the twos. So what's really going to happen is that your volume is going to be I times big R squared minus little r squared, and then we're still in the dx mode because we're going along the x-axis here. So I'm going to go from 0 to 4, and then I have pi, and my big R is f of x plus 2. So remember that f of x, maybe I should write this better. So f of x is 4 minus x, and then I'm going to add 2 to that. So what I really get is six minus x. Now six minus x is an f of x, it's my radius. So it's my big radius. So I'm gonna get oopsie, six minus x squared. And then I'm gonna subtract off my little radius, which was just constant too. Like notice it's always, the little radius is always the same. It's always two. So now I just have to integrate this and then I can go about my business. So what do we get here? Let's expand it and simplify. So we'll get 36 minus 12x plus x squared minus four. So that'll put us at i times 32 minus 12x plus x squared. And this is another really straightforward integration. So we'll get pi times 32x minus 6x squared plus 1 third x cubed from 0 to 4. All the zeros were canceled, so I can just plug in 4, and then I'm going to get 160 pi over 3. And that's it. 